In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Jesus reminds us, especially in the Eucharist, in the Word of God today, that the presence of Jesus in our lives is what allows us to have deep faith, the assurance of his presence. And so let us know that he is truly present with us in this moment as we ask forgiveness of our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all of our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to a people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you. We glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, whom taught by the Holy Spirit, we dare to call our Father, bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts, the spirit of adoption and your, as your sons and daughters, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. At the mountain of God Horeb, Elijah came to a cave where he took shelter. Then the Lord said to him, Go outside and stand on the mountain before the Lord. The Lord will be passing by. A strong and heavy wind was rending the mountains and crushing rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake, there was fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. After the fire, there was a tiny whispering sound. When he heard this, Elijah hid his face in his cloak and went and stood at the entrance of the cave. The word of the Lord. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. I will hear what the Lord God speaks. He speaks of peace for his people and his faithful. 
His salvation is near for those who fear him, and his glory will dwell in our land. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. Merciful love and faithfulness have met Justice and peace have kissed. Faithfulness shall spring from the earth, and justice look down from heaven. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I speak the truth in Christ. I do not lie. My conscience joins with the Holy Spirit in bearing me witness that I have great sorrow and constant anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people my kindred according to the flesh. They are Israelites. There's the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. There's the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, is the Christ, who is over all, God blessed forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. After he had fed the people, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and proceed him to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. After doing so, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When it was evening, he was there alone. Meanwhile, the boat, already a few miles offshore, was being tossed about by the waves, for the wind had, was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, he came toward them, walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified. It is a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. At once Jesus spoke to them, Take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter said to him in reply, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. Peter got out of the boat and began to walk on the water toward Jesus. But when he saw how strong the wind was, he became frightened. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus stretched out his hand and caught Peter and said to him, Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? After they got into the boat, the wind died down. Those who were in the boat did him homage, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. So Jesus had multiplied the loaves and the fishes. He had fed the crowd. And they began to have a belief in him as the Messiah, as one who would fix their problems. But Jesus has a deeper idea of what faith is and what it means. And we see that in this story. Notice that even though there is a storm that seems to almost capsize the boat that the disciples are in and they are feared, they are filled with all sorts of fear and terror, Jesus nonetheless comes through that storm toward them. The important thing to remember here is that Jesus doesn't come to stop the storm. He comes rather to be present to them. That's what faith is. It is not an escape route to our problems in which God is going to fix everything, but it's 
that assurance of his presence in our lives in different moments. Sometimes we limit that presence of God, and so today Jesus unpacks for us where he is present in our life. The first one is obvious. He comes in the midst of the storm, the storm that visits our lives so often by outside forces, whether that has to do with a health diagnosis or a tragedy. He wants to be present to us, not as an escape route of our problems, but to give us the assurance that he's present with us to the point that he sustains us and gives us meaning. Perhaps we have experienced that kind of presence when someone comes to comfort us in the loss of a loved one. They don't have to say a lot. It's their mere presence that gives us the assurance that we can continue along the journey. But also Jesus calls us to a deeper faith of his presence, especially in our failures. And we see that as Peter begins to sink, he's afraid. And immediately, we're told, Jesus grabs his hand and rescues him. So often in life, we begin to convince ourselves that Jesus is present to us only when we have everything in order, when we're holy. And we tell other people that as well. But Jesus says, no, he's there at the moment when we're sinking, when we're out of our depth, when we in many ways have failed to the point that we have allowed fear to overtake us and we have no place else to go. He's precisely there with his presence. The assurance of his presence is what faith is about in that moment. And finally, we see that Jesus is with the disciples in the messiness of their lives. Yes, it took a lot of courage for Peter to get out of the boat to walk on the water, but I've often thought that it took even more courage for Jesus to get into the boat with those guys. They were a mess. No doubt they were arguing about each other and with each other about who was responsible for not bailing out the water from the boat or rowing fast enough. And of course, maybe they were mocking Peter for trying to walk on water. But Jesus nonetheless comes into the boat with them, reminding us that Jesus is not afraid to come into the messiness of our relationships, the tensions that we feel in our family, the kinds of divisions that we have in society, the way that we are polarized for one another. Jesus comes into those moments and we should look to his presence in our lives to help us in those moments, to sustain us, not to fix all of our problems, but to give meaning to our lives. And so today, as we think about what it means to have faith, let's make sure that we do not understand it in a very simple way that God is going to give us an escape route from our problems, but rather that faith is about the assurance of his presence. And so let us be open to give him those moments in which we feel great anxiety because of the troubles in the world, the storms that come out of the blue in our lives like it did for those disciples. Let us give him as well the fears that we have and the failures in which he is present to us in those moments to bring healing. And also let us bring to him those tensions, those divisions, those spats we have in society and with each other in our families and ask him to be with us, to guide us the way, to give us a sense of how we can take the next step in the journey of our lives. That's truly what faith is about. It's not a faith that's easily reduced to the fact that he's going to feed us or take away all of our difficulties in life, but a faith that we celebrate in the Eucharist, a faith that he is really present with us in this moment, in the storms of life, in our failures, and in the broken relationships that we experience. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, 
born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Jesus calls us to have faith in his enduring presence amidst the storms of life. And so we offer these prayers with confidence. That as the church faces headwinds in the world, we will keep our eyes fixed on Christ and take hold of his hand to lead us forward, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For government officials, may God prompt them to use wisely our resources to serve the common good, giving priority to the vulnerable, the sick, the elderly, the unborn, and the marginalized, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The gospel today reminds us that the Lord is ever present to us. May those struggling with faith find peace of heart, knowing Jesus is, the same, is in the same boat with them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For students returning to school in the upcoming days, may they take up the journey of life with an eagerness to learn and a readiness to serve others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, your Son teaches us that faith is not an escape route from life's problems, but what sustains us for the journey and gives it meaning. May the certainty of his presence Give us courage to grab hold of his hand, especially in moments of darkness, so that we can take the next step on the journey of life with confidence through Christ our Lord. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty, our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth, he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state. By his suffering, he canceled out our sins by rising from the dead. He has opened the way to eternal life. And by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with a company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and giving thanks broke it, 
gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, all the bishops, the clergy, and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles, all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who Lord art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your spirit. And as Jesus reminds us today that his presence brings peace in our life, let us be present to one another and offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God. You take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
an act of spiritual communion. My dear Jesus, I believe that you are present in this most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you, unite myself wholly to you. Never allow me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. May the communion in your sacrament that we have consumed save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth through Christ our Lord. Amen. I want to assure young people today that as they return to school in the days ahead that I wish them well. May they continue as we prayed in the intercessions today that they have an eagerness for learning, but also that they come to an understanding that life is about something to be shared. We wish you well as you begin a new term of school. And I see that uh, Father Greg has improved his looks. <laughs> the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace and the presence of Christ. Thanks be to God. Let all things now live in a song of thanksgiving to God the Creator triumphantly raised, who fashioned and made us, protected and stayed us, and guides us with care to the end of our days. God's banners are o'er us, God's light goes before us, our pillar of fire shining forth in the night, till shadows have vanished and darkness is banished, as forward we travel from light into light. God rules o'er the forces, the stars in their courses, and sun in its orbit obediently shine. The hills and the mountains, the rivers and fountains, the deeps of the ocean proclaim God divine. We too should be a voice in our love and rejoicing with glad adoration, a song let us praise till all things now living unite in thanksgiving. God in the highest, Hosanna.